So this is a TT cluster that's in quite a bad state. I don't know if you can see that. There's actually a crack in the glass of the actual display units. This has been apart. Oh, that's reading too low. And if we power it on, it should all come to life. I'm pushing it on now. You can see the warning lights come up. There's no beep. There's no central display. There's no um, odometer and clock display. Although if you look really closely, <clears throat> you can just about see there, the display is actually working. There's no backlight. And then if we come across to VCDS over here, and then we run up instruments. And this is a test we go for through with every cluster. And luckily, the K-Line diagnostics connections work into the cluster, as you can see. Now, if I run output tests here, and we'll go through a list of tests. Now this, the first test should be to sweep the gauges. So we come across here, you can see it's doing absolutely nothing. So none of the gauges are working either. And then we come across here again, and we go on to the next test, uh, it's instrument cluster lamp test, and that is working. So you should get seven warning lights, sorry, eight warning lights up, and, and they're all there. So that's good. And then back here again, and then if we do the gong, as you can hear, nothing. So that's not working either. Uh, segment test. Yeah, this should light up everything on the display. Every every segment should be on, as you can see. Again, nothing. Um, and come back to here. And instrument lighting, as you can see, also nothing. So this one's likely got a fault somewhere in the cluster power supply, and probably more than one. So the first thing to do with this one is take it apart uh, and then see if we can get the power supply working, uh, and then take it from there. Okay, remove the uh, bezel and the back cover. We get a better look inside now, so you can see that display is definitely in a very bad way. Um, looking this way, you can see the needles are not positioned correctly. One is, I suppose the right hand one's nearly correct, the left hand one's way too high, that one's way too high, that one's too low. Uh, and also you can see here that you know, this section here should be fitted flush and it's clearly not. So this has definitely been a part. Let's take it a bit further and see what else we can find. Okay, looking at the back side of this, we can see why there's actually no gong, it's because it's completely missing. It should be there. This is one of our spares. Fits in there. Way right around. So that's another fault found. Okay, we're looking at this further. It looks like someone's bonded this whole thing together with a liquid silicon or a similar bonding agent and it's right underneath there too. You can see it through the glass. So this is going to be fun to try and remove. Why? Is the question. Okay, so I've managed to um, get some soft plastic levers under here so as not to damage the circuit board, but this guy is well and truly stuck in there. I mean, if I just try and <laughs> lift that out, you can see the clip's free, but that's just stuck. So basically, the silicon's gone underneath the display and is sticking this entire assembly to the circuit board. Uh, luckily, the only thing that's underneath this is a few LEDs, but I'm just not sure how successful we're going to be removing this guy. You can see the silicon, black silicon right underneath there. Crazy. Well, I managed to get this guy off without damaging the circuit board. And uh, here it is. You can see there's silicon sealer over every single LED. Why? And this guy is like completely solid. So that's basically going to have to be replaced. None of that is any use whatsoever. It's completely full of silicon. The display is stuck in there. So I'll just desolder this guy now and free the whole lot from the board. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the uh, LCD display using a air gun like this. With tweezers. And I've already put a bead of flux along here to help desolder. So start by warming up one end with a gun, pointing it away from other components because this obviously gets very, very hot. And slowly lift, heat up one end, it'll start to come up. There it goes. And work along. And this is set to about 370 degrees centigrade. And again, it should require no effort to lift this off the board 
you can put any effort more than the very slightest lift on the tweezers and then you know it's not hot enough and it's likely to damage the board underneath so keep going keep going keep going you can see the flux is making some smoke ignore that just keep going lift gently keep the heat applied going going and it just falls off like that there we go Removed. Take you in for a slightly closer look. There it is. So the display removed, you can actually see that most of those LEDs are actually working, just covered in silicon. Uh, the others aren't, and the backlight's not working either. Um, even though the green LEDs on there, and that will indicate that the uh, side lights are on, which they should be because that's how I've set the test rig up. Um, and again, none of the gauge illuminations. I'm not quite sure why that warning light's flashing. Don't normally see that. So we're making progress, um, but still some faults to find. Next fault has been found. So if I power the cluster up when it's been off for a few minutes, you'll see that when it powers up, you'll see that uh, it starts beeping now because we've fitted a buzzer back to the back of the circuit board. But you can see that none of the main backlights are coming on. None of the backlights, you know, for the uh, small displays are coming on, but they are, albeit underneath the silicon, for the center. Now, if I warm up the second microprocessor using this guy hot air gun with an attachment on it uh, then we'll power it up again when I've warmed it up and we'll see it all come on straight away. So it's a small microprocessor on the right here that is the problem one so if I bring in this attachment and just move it across the, the chip just to give it some heat. So when these fail it's quite typically a heat related fault they normally stop working when the uh, temperature is cold when they warm up they start working again and just feel out one that is right so that should be that should be warm enough now Let's try this so put that in the back just remove the protection foil turn this over and before it cools off we'll power it up and it should all just come up straight away and there we go see that all the backlight LEDs are now on as they should be and that's the cluster now working correctly and generally speaking if you leave it switched on it stays warm enough to continue working as it should um, I've noticed with this one that occasionally when it cools off a little bit it'll drop out and then a second or two later it comes back so that's established that it is that second processor the small one that's a fault so the fix for that is to remove the old one fit a new one program it with the right software version and then we'll come back and test it again So to remove this microprocessor chip here, which is the one we have a problem with, you can see I put some flux around the pins from a flux syringe like this one. And I'm going to use the hot air desoldering gun with a new attachment I have, which is here, which is the same shape as the chip. It's not actually essential to have this adapter while removing these if you don't want to keep the chip, but if you want to keep the chip intact, then you need something like this because if you overheat the chip, it will obviously damage it. When we put the new chip on we won't use the hot air to solder it in, we'll just solder each pin with a iron with a half mil tip. So the old chip has been removed and here it is with the software version written on the top. And the next step now is to fit the new chip and then attach the programmer and then reprogram it with the correct software. The new microprocessor is fitted to the board with the programmer connected. So we use CarProg for doing this particular job. And you can see the programmer connected on the microscope. Pretty much the only way you can solder the wires in the right place. And over here, you can see the programming software running and the top of the screen there, correct version number and ID programmed successfully.
with the microprocessor replaced. I'm going to test it, boots up fine when it's cold. So I'm going to use this freezer spray here, which is the stuff designed for circuit boards, and then we'll freeze this guy here. And you can see eventually some ice forming around there. If you can see that. I'm on the board there now. Before it warms up, turn the board round. Power connectors in, power it on, and it should come up straight away, no problem. And there we go, all backlights on. Okay, I started to remove the silicon from the uh, tops of these LEDs. You can see it's on the bottom row. I'm using surgical scalpel and just gently going underneath. So they can lift and get off like this. Tedious process, but uh, we'll come back to you when they're all done. Silicon all removed. Now it looks as it should. So if we power it on now, we should all see the backlights come up exactly as they should. There we go. Exactly as we should expect to see. Solder the new display into place. And there, loose at the moment, and I wanted to show you the difference between this one central display unit here, which has been filled up with black silicon um, to the point where this is now so stuck in there I can't get it out. So, I'm going to replace it with a good used one. That's what it should look like no silicon, light shines through it, and backlights. The LCD. Display installed, working as it should on the bench. Um, it's the old one. Next step is to start rebuilding the cluster, put the gauge motors back in and calibrate. So with the cluster partly reassembled we've already calibrated the gauges. Uh, I'll show you how that works. So if we look across here to VCDS, you can see the output test function. And all we do here is just run the output test function. And then come across to the gauges. And you can see them climbing to max. Then they swing back to their park positions, which is 3000 revs, 90 degrees centigrade, a half a tank of fuel and 62 miles per hour. The cluster finished and tested and if we power it up now you can see it comes up first time no problem at all there it is as it should be all working 100% so just to recap on this one uh, being a bit of a bad cluster uh, terrible bodge job on the uh, central display filled with silicon display broken apparently uh, the customer told me that the uh, the garage had done this to disable the low oil pressure warning light, which just seems completely crazy for many reasons. So we fixed that problem. And then, um, you know, one of the other problems was that the gauges weren't working properly and they weren't coming on at all. In fact, neither was the backlighting on the two small displays. Um, that was due to a microprocessor failure. And uh, we replaced that and reprogrammed it with the correct software. And then, of course, we recalibrated the gauges cleaned all the glass inside and out, which is why it looks so nice and clean, um, pretty much like new. And now this one can be wrapped up and sent back to the customer. Thanks for watching. <laughs>